at Utah State tonight. Countdown to kickoff live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Looking forward to that. But first, in the Smithfield House, a nice crowd. And we are underway between BYU and Pacific. Bauer quickly to Eschenberg, and she scores at 1-0. See how quickly BYU ends up going to their middles to establish them, especially Eschenberg. She's a player that kind of uh, struggled to connect the past couple of matches, and she's usually really spot on and efficient. So this might be a good opportunity for her to get going. Popped up by Lake, but ultimately a kill from Carissa Bradford, the freshman from Granada Hills, California. Pacific is one of the youngest teams in the country. Zero seniors, one junior. <laughs> you have one junior who is your team leader, and she's not even on the floor. Madeline Robinson cross court dug up by Jaden Tubbs, and then hit off the block and down by Allison Deneman from New Palestine, Indiana. Pacific is a team that has really worked hard over the past few weeks on their defense. They're really trying to extend the rallies, pop the ball up, and then find some transition kills. And so far, they've been able to attack this BYU block and find some seams. Service error from Bradford. The six foot two outside as Heather Olmstead looks on. Nice showing from the BYU student section here this afternoon. It's Taylor Ballard Nixon. Her husband, Dalton Nixon, got the start for the men's basketball team last night in the Marriott Center. Three balls for BYU. Bauer high for Robinson. One on one, and Robinson connects. Maddie Robinson, over the course of this season, has just gotten so smart there on the outside. You can tell she's really worked hard to develop a lot of different shots. Obviously, when you have a one-on-one -on -one block, you can just go to your favorite, which is that sharp cross-court, lots of power. Nixon goes a little long. And Nixon will come out, and Abby Dayton, the freshman, will come in to pass on the back line. Here's Kennedy Kaminsky, sophomore from Chandler, Arizona. That one's long as well. A bunch of service errors to start this one. Get the nerves out. Go a bit long. Get used to that altitude. And McKenna Miller in on the front row. I will say that for me, the altitude is palpable and totally As there. a broadcaster? Uh, yes, it's just the lighter air. <laughs> <laughs> and but talking to the different coaches. You know, some of them are like, oh, we don't we don't bring it up. We right. don't even talk about it. And when I was playing, it was very, you could feel it when you went to sea level versus playing, you know, at in Colorado. It just, it does make a difference. Some coaches just ignore it. They say, I don't want the head game that is the altitude. But others will train actively right. the week before with, uh, you know, let's serve from further back right. and, in practice and whatnot. It's interesting to see the approach from everyone. Well, I don't know that you have a head game, but you can't hide it, right? The players go out it's, and actually hit the ball. It's reality, so, right? Yeah. yeah. Heather Knighting off the block on the right side. Into the candy cane and a point for Heather Knighting, who you talked about, Amy, as being on fire recently. The last three matches, she's hitting 575. Well, you can see where she's contacting the ball very high. Um, she's hitting high hands, getting high seams, and attacking those corners. Kennedy Eschenberg with the block, fourth in the league in blocks per set. And the reason she is so good is because she works hard. You can watch her focusing in. Her eye work is fantastic. And then she reacts very quickly as she moves laterally. The ball perhaps going out. Nice bump set, cross court too far. And now BYU with a bit of a run here, up 7-4. 4-1 run by the Cougars. Heather's dad, Tom, played basketball here at BYU. Came down to Utah and BYU in the end. She chose to be a Cougar just like dad. Overpass for Whitney Bauer. And Whitney puts it down. And quickly, it's 8-4 Brigham. It all starts with the serve. Heather Knighting put a lot of pressure in the service lanes. Getting that overpass, and Bauer takes care of it. The slide off the block. German was dug up. This one's tight for Miller. Does well to push it over and keep it in play. First kill for McKenna Miller, the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. And if a set was going tight to the net, Miller's the one you want on the outside. She can do so much with even not the best sets. 6 1 run by BYU with Heather Nighting at the line for the most part. Blocked, reset. 
Leo high on the outside and touch. And there's Riley Patterson on the board, who we mentioned leads the conference in total kills, total attacks. She gets a lot of sets on the outside. Well, she's an outside hitter, but she's so good on the right. She was an opposite that actually she plays right back defense so that they can use her as an outlet out of the back row. That's an incredible versatility to be able to play on either side. Eschenberg is dug by Deniman. Back to Patterson. On that right side, back-to-back -back kills, and that quells the 6-1 run with two straight. 9-6 BYU. You know, and I, in all my years, I don't think I've ever seen an outside hitter play right back defense, and it just goes to show what a fantastic and important part of this offense she is. And it changes where you can go offensively, too, with her as McKenna Miller gets another one. Good hustle from Pacific. 10-6. BYU hitting 750 so far, no errors. Pacific hitting 300, so after the service errors, kind of got the got the uh, butterflies out. Some good offense from both these teams. And Bauer doing a nice job distributing the offense. Five different people with kills so far in this set. Bauer has been such a weapon from the service line as well. Nearly an ace every two sets. That's second in the conference, and that's second best in the rally era as the officials are taking a moment that is Robert Okamura Julianne Volk is the up ref it's not a challenge it's just perhaps looking at Pacific's rotation and everything's good well Pacific um, before they had some injuries they usually ran a 6-2 and so now they're in a 5-1 with just one uh, setter and so probably getting used to that lineup on the floor. Sedona Sherman with another one. And here's Jaden Tubbs, whose sister is in the stands, here to watch the match. From Turlock, California. Bauer in the middle for Eschenberg. Kept alive nicely by Bradford. And then hit back over, free ball swing. Mary Lake is there. The back-to-back -back defensive player of the year in the West Coast Conference. Big swing out of the back row and in for Allison Deniman, the five foot ten outside out of system. Long rally, great defensive effort. You see Mary Lake clapping while she's on the ground. Let's go, let's go, get that ball up. But then the <laughs> back row attack, Pacific really coming strong with that back row effort. It's causing some problems for BYU. And the ace by the Tigers who have made this a 10-9 set. Jaden Tubbs, 26th ace, adds to her team high. There are five players with 20 plus aces on this specific team. BYU has five with 10 plus by comparison. Shorter matches, generally speaking, as Miller pounds it off the block. But impressive uh, service numbers from Pacific. Definitely, and BYU struggling to stay in system, but when you have a player like Miller on both antenna who can get the ball down regardless of the if you're in system or not. That's such a huge outlet. Another hard smack dug up. Robinson out. 11-10. A reminder, Pacific has never won a set against BYU under Heather Olmstead. 27 sets in a row. Playing good ball here in set one. And when you have so many young players on the floor, they're going to change from week to week because the learning curve is just so huge. And so this is a much different team than even three weeks ago. What a great pass from Mary Lake that sets it up for Kennedy Eschenberg. McKenna Miller, by the way, the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Week. First in the league in kills, Eschenberg connects there, hitting 338, leads the team in hitting percentage, third in the league. Blocked by Knighting, such an imposing force up top, but good timing in a phone booth for Kennedy Kaminsky. Yeah, not a lot of space there. She's got a double block in front of her. Heather Knighting, though, jumped with the setter, allowing an opening. 12-11, BYU ranked 11th in the country. Nixon had to wait on that one. Still dug up by Gabby Leo. Free ball coming, this one's high. Lake sets to Bauer. Robinson stuffed Lake. Robinson again, blocked but out. 
The good patience by BYU to go back to that well. I think patience is a important word because a lot of times you can get mentally rattled if a team maybe digs your best shot or you have to take three or four or five swings. That's when teams start to make unforced errors and BYU staying patient and just fighting and continuing to attack. One blocked and out. Pacific gets the point. So Pacific hanging tight here, hitting over 300, bidding BYU hitting over 500. It's just been a matter of who's serving, I suppose. Patterson already with three kills, and she is using the block well. Robinson, again, back to that left side with Maddie Robinson, third kill on six swings, two digs. Like the location from Whitney Bauer, she's going to push it all the way to the outside, all the way to the antenna, allowing Robinson to hit that ball down the line. Six straight points where neither team has sided out. Patterson, great timing on that set by Gabby Leo. When she's hitting more on the right side, she's a lefty. Is she playing right side? She might be. They may have switched her to oppo. We'll get a good look at that. But she has been passing on the left as well, so they like her passing when she's in there. They need her everywhere on the floor. Miller off the net quite a bit, and then this one is dug way over on the other side. 15-13. McKenna Miller operates with a different fastball than anyone else in the gym. Deoya up 15-13. We've got a good one so far. Pacific hanging tight, down two at the first media timeout. Four with you, and I said, what do you like about your team? What's your strengths? He said, we have a growth mindset. We're extremely young. But we're out here to compete and learn and grow, and they're playing a, a great first set so far. Well, and it's nice for him because every stride they make this season, they can take into the next and the next because they've got so many young players. Just one upperclassman, which is wild. Sedona Sherman, one of those freshmen, 6'3 middle blocker from Arizona, 16 15. Pacific getting 474. Bauer up the middle, Eschenberg. Still alive and then swung at by Tubbs, but out of bounds. 17-15. Yoy hitting 556, and perhaps that's the difference. Just a little bit better offensively. Same amount of kills. Out of system set. Dug up BYU in transition. Bauer. Robinson. Popped up by Patterson. And off the high hands for the kill, Carissa Bradford, the freshman from California, cuts it to one. Another smart swing. Bradford at 6 2, has some power, has some size, and a very smart swing with that big block in front of her to keep it high and use that block. It's Patterson at 5 8, it's Bradford at 6 2. On the other side is Lake. Watch that one go too far. Fourth service error. Do you like the two to one error to ace ratio? Is that a number you like or does that's you have a that, different opinion? No, I, I, I'm actually not as concerned about aces per se as more importantly, are you, you know, getting them out of system is I think much more important than the actual ace. Are you serving tough? Who cares if it doesn't go down? That's a bonus, but can you put a tough ball on a team and get them in seams? It's hard to quantify a team on its heels. And right. that's what service yes. pressure can be, right? Exactly. If you can stay on the offensive the entire play, then you win. That's me in an argument a lot. <laughs> on the defensive. <laughs> the offense. Back on your heels. <laughs> Kennedy Kaminsky, back to back. Kills in the middle, ties this thing up at 18. Overpass City. BYU wants to argue here that Whitney Bauer was attempting to set that ball and that Kaminsky reached over the net, but because the ball was kind of in the middle of the antenna, they're not going to. And Pacific has taken the lead, 1918. Well, at any time you're tied at 20, anything can happen. And so that's what you want as a team. Just get yourself into a position where you can compete at the end of a set and anything goes those last five points. And Pacific has done that. They are right in this. Fiori led 10-6. So Pacific is 
climbed back in this one 19-19 with the junior Ballard Nixon at the line. Leo High for Patterson. That's one popped over by Nixon. High for Patterson again, through the block, but out, but BYU into the net. That's a big play right there, an unforced error from BYU. Gives Pacific the lead, and they are the first to 20. And Maddie Robinson was the one, Heather Olmstead coming out and talking to her. And bumped into Heather Knighting there. Luckily, no turned ankles there. And it's 2019 Tigers. Lake, this one's really tight on the net. Lefty from Robinson to tie it at 20. Great save from Robinson. That ball being pushed a little tight, a little far, but showing what an athlete she is. Very smart move. 2020, like you said. The middle dug up by Knighting. Bauer goes crashing into Robinson. Knighting on the plane. Well, now BYU will argue that's the exact same play as was before. But this time, I think when you attack as a hitter, you're less likely to win that. Yeah. It looks like she's over. I think, it, yeah, she's way over. Over the plane, the call, 21-20, and that's an ace! That one drops out of the sky, inbounds, and it's 22-20. Second and final timeout for BYU, who has never lost a set under Heather Olmstead to this team. 27 straight. And here come the Tigers with three to go. Well, the Tigers have come out fighting. They've worked hard. They've been very smart in their hitting choices as well. You could see that they've really attacked the block that's in front of them. They knew that BYU would have a big block. And so instead of trying to go around it or find a seam, they're just going to use those hands. And they've executed that perfectly. A couple of aces. The last few points have been the difference, 22-20. Our score box sponsor is Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. 22-20 Pacific here in set one. The last match you and I did together against San Francisco, BYU in a set three, was down 23-19, and McKenna Miller came off the bench having not played that set and served BYU to a crazy comeback. And Pacific in the driver's seat right now with some timely aces some nice placement well and this is where you look at a team how does BYU respond when their backs are against the wall and they've got to fight their way out but they don't want to make errors so are they going to come out and be a little tentative which is something that the coaching staff has worked with the team hey we we fight we don't just come out and tip so in these last five you can look for them to really be a little aggressive the last time they were in this particular rotation they set the ball back to Knighting, who got a quick kill and went back to serve. Riley Patterson from the line. Lake high for Miller. Cross court, McKenna Miller on the bump set for Mary Lake. And out of system play again, and Miller bails out her team. She has been so good at getting kills in those opportune times. And immediately Miller points. Back at her teammates who made the play. Leo High for Patterson off hands. Robinson hustling, diving. But Pacific gets it. And Patterson, who we thought was going to play outside, is playing on the right side. Right. I know. At first, it, it confused me a little to have her there. But it makes sense, given that she's played opposite her entire career. You can see why she is so good out of the back row there as well and has been so smart. Six kills on nine swings, no errors. 23-21 Tigers. Miller, yes. 23-22, BYU going to its best player at the end of this set. Right, at crunch time, this is where you, BYU wants to be with McKenna Miller in the front court because she can get a kill regardless of the situation and she's been so steady this entire season. She is not rattled. She's six for six in set one. Off of Robinson's hands and out. Set point Pacific. Looking to snap a 27 set losing streak to BYU here. With this serve. Another great high swing for Pacific as they hang in there. They've been very side out tough. Jaden Tubbs. 
Bauer up the middle, Eschenberg blocked. A swing for the set, off hands and there it is! Pacific wins set one. Off the antenna, scratch that. BYU is arguing, conversation will be had with Robert Okamura. You believe it went off the antenna, Amy? I think it looked, we'll have to see. It'll be great to see who hit the antenna. Was it off the block or was it the first swing? It looks like it was the swing that was off the antenna, at least from that angle. Ooh, to me it looks like I, it, the, the hand of Nixon. Yes. It looks like it started moving. And this will be challenged immediately from Greg, Greg oh, Gibbons. Oh, it is. And he's going to win it, and Pacific's going to win this set. Yeah. Nixon touched the antenna with the left pinky. At first it looked like the ball, but it is yeah. moving before, before the ball gets there. So Pacific is going to win this set and snap a 27-set losing streak. They've come out here and taken down BYU in this first set. It's inevitable. And this shouldn't take long, but probably will. It's just the nature of the beast. Greg Gibbons using his first challenge. And in real time, yes, you're not thinking that a hand is hitting that. You're thinking right. the ball does, right? Well, so especially that the part. angle of the ball, where it was coming from. She's way outside the antenna, which is probably why Nixon is reaching towards her. But it's clear that Nixon, not just her pinky, but her, I think. Three. And fun to see Patterson and Miller go at it. Both six kills in the first set. Two of the top five hitters in the league. And the fact that this is taking so long makes me wonder if perhaps Bioy is going to get this point. Now I'm starting to question what I thought originally, <laughs> right? Because we look at this, and it's what hits the antenna. Still looks like is it, it Nixon? The I ball, the ball doesn't look like it hits the antenna at well, all. Well, in which way does the antenna move? It seems. This is oh, our ultra wow. bow. This is. It looks like. I think it's. I think it's Nixon. Yeah. Nixon. Is that what you feel like? Oh, for sure. Ball doesn't. Yeah. But I've been touch point yeah. Pacific. The touch being the fingers off of the antenna and BYU is shocked by this result. You really can't believe it, but Pacific has won the set. And BYU is now moving on and Heather Olmstead looks on. But she doesn't believe it 25. 22 is the set one score and Pacific fans very supportive. It's loud and it's tough, and they weren't flap. They were just unflappable. They did a great job. Riley Patterson, six kills on nine swings to go with an ace and three digs. Well, it just shows how Patterson can do it all. You know, she's been playing outside all season and then moves back to the opposite position for this match when they go to the 5 1, and she doesn't look like she's missed a beat. Incredible effort as she is. Six for nine there on the right side. A sophomore from Sonora, California. And for the first time under Heather Olmstead now in her fifth season, BYU lost a set to Pacific. So a set is one thing, the match is another. And here we go to the second set with BYU down, having hit 500 but lost. Yeah. That's <laughs> rare. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Well, it just, I think, comes down to more opportunities. And so defensively, we saw how Pacific was just able to chisel the block. And anytime you can use the blocker's hands, that just takes the defense out of it completely. That makes Mary Lake unable to even be involved in the play because you aren't hitting the ball anywhere near the court. So perhaps rotations being assessed again, and here we go. Last night you did uh, a game on the Pac-12 Network that went three hours. So long. That was a long first set. <laughs> yeah. It's 1.39 and we're through one set. Let's hope we don't have three hours worth. <laughs> Coming up, perhaps we will. And Maddie Robinson pounds it off the block. We're tied at one. Or excuse me, one nothing BYU with McKenna Miller back to serve. And the serve has become more of a weapon for her. 12 aces the last 21 sets. And this time, Eschenberg contacts it, and Leo was in the back row, so it's point BYU. I think that one in particular, I would have been very surprised if that had gone against Eschenberg. 
that ball clearly coming over the net. We have two nothing. Deniman, Leo. Blocked by BYU at the net. Three nothing, strong start for the Cougars. Patterson there on the right side, and you can look at that well-formed block. No way there was anything getting by. Eschenberg presses so well. Patterson off the block of Nixon. Lake sets, back row attacks. Into the back row, rather, from Nixon. 4 nothing BYU sending a message to start set two. Very quick start, and it starts, like you said, with the tough serve. Incredible job there from behind the line for Miller as she puts a lot of pressure with that hard-driven, deep float serve. The dump from Leo trickles it over. Ninth kill of the season. Eschenberg sees that she's going to tip the ball over, but then turns around and lose sight, loses sight of it. The sorcery from the setter. Bradford, low from Lake. Nixon, out. This one called in. Line judge set out, down ref set in. Greg Gibbons coming up to uh, not necessarily appeal, just looking around saying, okay, all right. Move on, next play. 5-1. We love you! Lake. Leo cross court. Off the block and out. Allison Deniman. A beautiful set from Leo. She was pushed all the way to the corner and then made it look so easy as she set that ball all the way to the outside. That takes a lot of strength and a lot of good location choices. Like bump set out of system for Nixon. Leo in the middle. Over the top, dug up by Riley Lyman into the match. Robinson, nice stab by Bradford to keep it alive. And then off the block from Deniman. Deniman's listed at 5'10". She stands the same height as Patterson. She's got to be more like 5'8". Uh, yeah, she does not look like she's 5'10 out there, but is playing just like Patterson, where you just can chip away at that big block in front of her. You use hands. It doesn't matter how tall you are. Knighting in the middle, 6'3". You're just joining us, Pacific. One set, one, 25-22, snapping a 27-set streak. Losing to BYU, first time a Heather Olmstead-led team has lost a set to Pacific. Now BYU up 6-3 in set two. Denman over the top, crafty for the sophomore from Indiana. See Nixon way back on her heels, waiting defensively. Very smart spot, nobody even close. It's Patterson. Who has an ace. Bauer, the deep chuck. I mean, that's that's the furthest I've ever seen a dump. Yeah. Well, we've seen her in a few <laughs> other sets really try to go for that spot. Usually uh, there's some touch on the block, but there is what Bauer has been working on all season long. Perfect that, placement. 51 kills for Bauer this season. This is seven. I mean, she is, she is aggressive. Offensively, and you love it. 17 years old, turns 18 during the season. Here. Lake keeps it alive, and then the swing from Miller. Go, go, gadget, right arm to keep that one in. <laughs> that angle was very, very tough. You could see even she's surprised by how she was able to turn that ball. The defense nowhere near it. Miller hitting 445 the last three matches coming into today. Leo high for Patterson on the right side, smashes that through. Any touch? No. 9-4. Timeout Pacific. Romney be the quarterback, we'll find out tonight. Utah State got blown out at Air Force last week, so certainly expecting a much better performance from the Aggies. We'll get you ready tonight. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Out of the timeout. Deniman dug up. Miller off the block, McKenna Miller, perfection, eight for eight tonight. 
Well, and that's really what we expected to see leading up to this. In the 5-1 situation, Gabby Leo, a fantastic setter, but definitely undersized at 5-5, and you put her up against McKenna Miller there on the outside. That's a mismatch that BYU wants to continue to exploit. Helzinga with a tough set. Serve, rather. And then pounded up the gut. Sherman with another kill. Five for eight. Sherman with the hammer. And where was the block for BYU? They were pushed really far left so that really that right side blocker should have been there. Robert Okamura, as we wait for the sub, now it happens. A lot of rotation conversation in this match. The scores table. 10-5, BYU up in set two. There's Deniman. Bauer, fantastic. Was that a lift? <laughs> it was a little powerful. Very smart. Good play. Not a lot of opportunity to dig that one if you're not right in front of it. Two kills for Bauer. She's had two or more kills in 16, make it 17 of the 23. And now another rotation conversation, but this time it results in a point. BYU gets to a point. Pacific out of rotation. Okamura, a stickler for the rotation. Well, a little overlap as these players, we've talked how they're not used to playing in the 5-1, and anytime you're passing, you want to make sure you're not overlapping the person next to you. One out from Bradford, so getting away from Pacific quickly after winning that first set, 13-5, timeout. Tigers, some swing, pretty good one. Miller, perfection continues, nine for nine for McKenna Miller. She cannot be stopped. 14 to five, BYU. Once again, taking advantage of that mismatch, you can see how much space McKenna Miller has as she continues to hit high and well above the block. Eight one run by BYU, blocked. And the offering from Bradford, she'll get it again. Soft block, Bauer high for Miller, and Miller is finally dug up and dug up again. First times today. Deniman out of the back row. That's the second time she's done that. 5-8 at assist and doesn't matter. 14-6. Great up from Krista Bradford because that was a fantastic tip from McKenna Miller. And a great read as Bradford as the off blocker comes running to get that ball up. Eschenberg dug up nicely by Tubbs. Free ball comes over from the Tigers. Bauer, Eschenberg, dig by Patterson. Bradford, no approach. Did it go down? It did. The defense for Pacific, those last two plays. Surprising that BYU, after really doing a nice job with their power, as we get a good look at this little miss pancake opportunity there. Why BYU started tipping? Right when their power game had worked really well and the defense for Pacific is very, very good. Free ball from Dayton. Slide is off the block and still alive, nearly hits the upper ref. Point BYU 15-7. So McKenna Miller was nine for nine, dug up a couple of times. So the perfect day is over, but getting a mere 818. <laughs> As an outside hitter, getting all the junk. You'll take That's it. Awesome. Yeah, seriously. It's an unfair situation there. Miller swings as Eschenberg was tipping. I'm interested to see who they'll give the kill to. 16-7. Well, it's a tough ball. On that play, you always defer to the person whose strong hand is in front of the ball. So Miller with her right hand probably could have been the one to take that, but you never want to take that chance. They gave it to Eschenberg, though. Did they? <laughs> Touch. Bradford gets another one. Excuse me, Patterson. Patterson cooling off considerably after going 6-0-9. Now seven kills on 13 swings, a couple of errors in this. Set Mary Lake at the last minute pulls away. 17 to 8. We'll keep an eye on uh, Lake's dig number so far, four. So 28 away from the all time lead at BYU. Not likely to happen in this match. But we'll keep an eye on it. Really low, tipped up. 
Bauer, set her out, his leg. Nixon, over the block. Deneman wanted to swing at it. One on one for Kalen Ballard Nixon. Three for six. 18 8 BYU. The ball a little off the net, but Nixon does a nice job to keep it in play, and BYU continues to really work antenna to antenna. Down the line from Carissa Bradford. Five kills on 13 swings to go with six digs. Bradford, a very strong 6-2, just a freshman. She hits a heavy ball. Eighteen to nine, you are doubling up Pacific, but the Tigers won the first set by three. We really up big here in the second stanza. Here's Sadegi. Power for Nixon again. Sadegi with the dig. Leo high for Deneman, blocked by Eschenberg. It's a tough play to go up and hammer away because you lose sight. You see Deneman, she has to track the set, which is behind her, so she can't see Eschenberg looming over the net. And looming is an appropriate phrase there. Six foot five for Kennedy Eschenberg. <laughs> 20 to nine, BYU dominating in set two now after losing the first. Mary Lake. Leo, the one-handed set to Deneman, gets the touch. Lyman. Robinson. Sadegi coming in hot. 21-9 now for BYU. What's changed in set two for the Cougars after losing the first set? Well, I think they're serving very tough, and Pacific has not really been able to stay in their offensive rhythm. The block has picked up and been a little more disciplined, and that's prevented Pacific from using them a ton. From tight of the net, Nighting just sends it over. Sadegi keeps it alive. Patterson on this right side, blocked by Nighting. Tubbs high for Patterson. Through the block! And Nixon can't get to it. What a swing from Patterson. Eight kills. So that little seam in the block and Lyman there. But BYU can't quite finish it off. Nighting and BYU has not gone to the middle of ton. Well, I think you could see that anytime Bauer is going to the middle, she's doing it being five, six feet off the net. And so as although BYU is seemingly passing a little better. There's still just enough out of system that it's difficult to get the balls to the middle. 13 sets for those two is a, perhaps a little more than I thought was happening. Nice dig for it. Nixon. Robinson is blocked. Robinson is blocked again, but out. Patterson and Sherman making things hard for Maddie Robinson to now be like two points away. Ballard Nixon. 5 1 run for the Cougars. Good pass from Sadegi. Patterson down the rosy line. Man, Yikes. smashing the ball. Check the air pressure. On a power. Patterson, not a lot of line to hit into, but she takes it. Incredible and look, swing. And look who's right there. One of right. the best liberos in the country. Has to watch it. Knighting. On that right side as well. Set point, and for the first time today, these BYU fans can get up on their feet for set point. Hi for Patterson, no block was up. Bauer, Knighting, yes. No block was up on that either. 25-11, we're tied at one set apiece as BYU rebounds in an amazing way. Zero hitting errors on 25 swings in that set from BYU. And look at this, the confidence in Bauer to set the three when she's way outside the court. An incredible move from the freshman setter, and good job for Nighting to be up and ready for that. 
Robinson. That's the worst set me pass I've ever seen. <laughs> exactly. Credit Robinson. You shank a ball and mentally <laughs> has to turn around quick for the out of system kill. Set me and right now, Mary Lake. I need this ball now. Taylor Ballard Nixon. Perfect ball to Leo off the block for Patterson. It all starts with a great pass in volleyball, and that was a perfect pass. Well, getting everyone involved. That also, that perfect pass just kind of holds the defense. It holds the block and gets them to be a second late as they make those decisions because they have to wait until they see the set. Speaking of wait, every substitution is an extra three yeah. seconds. I mean, by the end, we're going to have an extra 10 minutes in this match. We're looking to see. I, I thought there was a little miscommunication <laughs> there. Robert Okamura is paid by some time, apparently. But it takes a sec. Maddie Robinson off the block, but out cross court. UIU with the point. Great swing from Robinson and good block from Pacific, but just missed that line. 2 1 BYU in set three, tied at one set apiece. I'm Jerem Jordan alongside Amy Gantz and our crew here in the Smithfield House. The 11th ranked BYU dropped the first set by three. Joey just won the second set by 14. The unique nature of volleyball. The roller coaster. Untimed. Go to 25. And go yeah, up and down in terms of momentum. You can get a sweep. You can get a reverse sweep where you win the last three. Dalzinga. Ryder Griddle and Miller swings. That might have gone out, kept alive. Soft block, popped up by Lake and out finally. 2-2, two, two, some scrappy play from both teams. So fun to watch that defense, incredible effort. There was no doubt that ball was up. She actually slid a little too far as it hit her arm. And BYU not able to finish that off. Bauer goes into the net. She was a little tight as it was. Tough to do something with that set. And she has this big windup with the left arm. Well, you love that because you could see the defense collapsing in thinking she was gonna tip just over the block right. and when she chucks it deep there's nobody around her her range of where she's gonna dump with the ball right. is different than anyone else I've seen men women's just she could spread all over the court three three nice serve. and the ace Heather Knighting 14th ace of the season that was very powerful Located perfectly down the line. That's a tough ball to pass. I think it keeps it tight. And a little shrapnel off the shoulder. Sherman with another kill. I think BYU not really helping out on the three sets. And so that is where Pacific, if they can get that pass up to the net, they can continue to go to that play until BYU makes an adjustment because it's wide open. Slide to Eschenberg. Walk back over. Set her out, who's Lake on the bump set. To McKenna Miller, first swing of set three. 10 kills for McKenna Miller. Our score box is brought to you by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Whitney Bauer from the line. Let's see if she can serve up some pressure. She did so good in the line this season. Mary Lake looking for another assist. It's time to Nixon through the block for the 6-3 junior. Great set for Mary Lake in the past few years. Obviously, liberos have to step in and become the setters whenever the actual setter passes the ball, but digs the ball. And Mary Lake, one of the best at locating and getting kills. Eighth assist, double contact. Call on Gabby Leo, 6-4. UA has three losses this season, 19 and three. The three are two. Marquette at home, at Texas, and San Diego. So respectable losses of teams, two of which, as uh, that ball goes in, are in the top 25. San Diego out, beat BYU, and then lost to Pepperdine the next so week. good against BYU. They really looked fantastic. They've got some offensive arms just coming out there. They've got six different people who can blast the ball. 
Now, barring an upset for San Diego and BYU, it's going to come down to that matchup again. San Diego one in five. Another dunk from Bauer. Tub keeps it up. San Diego one in five. So what BYU needs to do during the tiebreaker, should they both win out, is beat San Diego in three or four. Then BYU gets the tiebreaker, gets the auto bid. Not as big of an issue. They could both conceivably tie for the conference championship as well. With no conference tournament, there is uh, no need for an outright winner except for the auto bid part, which I don't think San Diego will need to get into the tournament. Right. But a win over BYU would certainly help the Reds, man. Yeah. BYU is in. This is what C. Your, and your RPI and your seeding is so important going into that. Can you host through uh, first two rounds? And that's been a key for BYU to make it the Sweet 16 the last, uh, it feels like 27 years. <laughs> I think it's been, what, seven? Uh, Sweet 16s in a row, hosting a lot of the first and second rounds. Was that touched? I don't think so. You didn't think it was touched. They did give it to BYU, oh. meaning touch from Pacific and out. So wow. point Cougars, no challenge. BYU up 10-5. The five-point advantage in set three. We're tied at set one here in Pro Talked about just how momentum shifts, and it's up and down, but the Cougars in that particular match stayed steady and got it done throughout the entire three sets, which shows a lot of maturity in their team. That was the BYU Sports History Showcase presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. They've renovated it this year. Really? It looks amazing. If you haven't been back to the BYU Store, it looks awesome. Denim and Leo. Patterson off of Miller, 10-6. And that's how good Patterson is, is when Pacific gets a perfect pass to the net, they still elect to go to the back row attack and Patterson. That is a difficult ball. And you don't see that a ton in the women's no. game, is that? The D ball. The D yeah. ball to the back right side hitter. And Mary Lake looks at another ball that goes in. She's got eagle vision, but there's been a couple of balls that have made it in today. Well, it's kind of dropped. You see it the last second, the bottom's dropping out of that. That's why coaches will yell at their players. You go to the line. Don't turn and watch. You take it to the line. Nixon elevates. Nixon with some power on that swing. We talked about elevating. She's so long and tall, and that arm contact is so high, she's able to hit above the block. Came off the bench at Stanford. Seven kills, no errors in that win at number two, Stanford. Good pop-up by Tubbs. The one hundred foot approach, untouched. It was a Perhaps great a little block. Yeah, sorry, great defensive effort by Pacific to save what was a beautiful play from BYU. Mary Lake with a great up and then a terrific set from Bauer to push it all the way out. Lake, of course, the backup libero in the Volleyball Nations League. And Whitney Bauer just took a Scott Sterling right in the face. I'm wondering why the block for BYU is pulling so much at these back row attacks because oh, the amount right. of power that Patterson can generate, to me, seems like there should be a block up every time. And Bauer sets perfectly the next play, so she's okay. The crowd gasped and was quiet on that play as Bauer looks like she can see out of her left eye, perhaps eyes watering a bit. Yeah. She's blinking a lot. Don't and and if I was BYU right now, I'd say, oh, we have a little moisture over here. Just I to give her a little, her a little, little breather. Protocol. I don't think you pull your blocker. Blocked, still alive, batted over. Bauer with the dump. And into the net, that's the second time today. For Bauer. This is the home of Scott Sterling, by the way. Of course, that was done on Studio C, as seen on BYU TV. But Bauer, uh, yeah, the Scott Sterling sketch was shot on this exact court. Went viral in soccer, viral in volleyball. And she is still in there, smile on her face. Looks to be okay. I still would like a little bit of a discussion with the trainer. Did you ever have that happen to you? Oh, getting hit in the face. I mean, squarely like that. Oh, yeah. A lot. My first, uh, my first day, especially when you're a wing blocker, you're more likely because you don't have as much time. And with your elevation, you know, your head's above the net, right? Well, no, this isn't blocking. This is me <laughs> playing defense. I think my first day on the national team, 
I got hit in the face five times on slides. Just over wow. and over. I changed my defense very quickly to the point where I was a lot better. But it was so embarrassing. Were you to get your hands up faster? Is that what you're well, Yeah, like sit my butt back a little. Yeah. Be so high. But, oh, that was embarrassing. Tubbs digs Miller. Nice pop up by Dayton. Talzinga cross court. Still bouncing. That's alive. But it didn't make it over on the fourth one. I mean, that was pinballed around and had a shot. But finally went down. 15-9 BYU. Watch this. One, two, off the head. Three, and didn't quite make it over. There was a play with USC and BYU in the men's game a couple years ago where USC had given up on a play and BYU right. spun it over. And that goes viral online every now and then. I didn't really see it. Steve Vail totally saw it. <laughs> and uh, that's one of the more famous plays from here. Are you? Pacific with 20 points the last two sets to BYU's 41. So it's been all Cougars the next two. 16-10 lead here in set two. As we approach set four. Miller, a match high, 13 kills on 16 swings, still no errors for her time. Well, and that pass, set, kill, first ball, side out, kill. BYU has really been so good building up to that. A good pass from Robinson on a tough serve. Miller dug up for just the fifth time today. Out of play. 18-10. Now the wheel's coming off here a little bit for the Tigers. Yoy has rebounded after losing the first set. On a challenge. Dayton. Bauer. Inside for Miller. 14 kills for the senior, McKenna Miller. And again, Bauer locating so well. Look at the push, the strength on this set, all the way out to Miller, who is right in tune on her approach. Fantastic swing. Not a system swing coming up here for Patterson, but a great one. Bauer, Miller blocked, knighting. Good flexibility to get to that one at six and four. Good swing by Deneman. Eschenberg out. 19-11. And here's Patterson, who has an ace. Bauer, Miller, tipped, yes. 15 kills now for McKenna Miller. The senior who continues to climb the charts, ninth all-time in kills at BYU. Perfectly placed. Patterson had to be back and ready for the hammer that had been coming down the line. And then just that soft tip right over the block. This next week on the 8th is the one-year anniversary of Miller tearing her ACL last year. She has had incredible recovery to come back as a senior and be amazing. Yeah, beyond incredible. Yes. It's, it's been less than a year. And the stuff by Eschenberg, and this crowd is into it. 2011. Not a ton to cheer about in that first set, but it's been all BYU the last two. Such a big block. Tipped by Sherman, Lake pops it over, Tubbs sends it back. Looks like your family reunion volleyball for a sec. <laughs> Backline dig. Patterson is Ruth! Shingles and all! 22-11. With the amount of power that Patterson generates on her swing, you get a block up in front of her, and it's gonna look pretty good. We're putting up a big block this afternoon and up 22 11. That one just into the net. 23 11. You are two away from set four after losing the first set. 
Patterson, 12 kills on 28 swings, six digs. There's Bauer with three kills tonight. Today, rather. As the setter, not bad. And now a dig. This one high for Miller, and then she is roofed by Sherman. Those are so difficult. The timing changes. You've got to wait and wait and wait, and you're tracking the ball. And then to hit it into that block that definitely Sherman had plenty of time to get over there and set up. That one served out from Lucy Carpenter. Set point. Bradford dug up. Lake, Bauer, Miller out of the back row. That one sent into the crowd. Pounded with the bick. An emphatic ending by McKenna Miller. A lot of net play and a very powerful job. Eschenberg really pressing hard to get that down. Bradford. Anyone looking for touch? Not called. 2 nothing BYU. And a challenge being issued by Greg Gibbons. That'll be his second. He won his first, and it won the first set. BYU get to challenge. Touch at the net uh, being whipped at. You get three challenges in the first four sets. If you go to five, you get another one. It's going to be tough to tell from that angle. This will be a lot easier. And yep. yes. And that is our super slow mo. That is that a angle really right nice there. shot. Is that the thumb of Nixon? It looks like, oh, it's just saying no. <laughs> Again. Yeah, good luck calling that in real time. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just. It's just, it's just so hard. So we look at it and see the touch, right? Why does it take so long to make the call and move on? I think Let's sometimes go. you want to be sure. I'm pretty sure on that <laughs> one. I, I understand what you're saying on other ones. That one is sure. It's done. Make the call. Let's go. OK, thank you. Yeah, that like, was fast. Great. Amazing. <laughs> Speed it up. I mean, once you know, you know, right? That's what everyone told me uh, when I dated my wife, right? Once you know, you know. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Have to look at that from every angle, much like your decision. Oh, yeah. You know, well, I feel like these two marriage. decisions are a little different, but <laughs> oh, you're right. Slightly. Yeah, I did bring up the name. <laughs> Jaden Tubbs. Eschenberg, Patterson with the dig. Leo Bradford dug up. Morgan Bauer to Whitney Bauer. Leo tipped. Robinson Bauer. High on the right side for Nixon, kept alive. And then finally down to great hustle by Tubbs. Point BYU. Nixon's done a nice job hitting high. She's not trying to go low seam. She utilizes the fact that she's tall and long and she can hit with a lot of range and use those blockers. Patterson in the seam, dug up by Lake. Knighting. Heather Knighting's been on fire the last couple of games. And look at this, 8-0-10 tonight, hitting 800. That's pretty impressive, especially you watch her hard work being available out of transition. She really does a nice job to land, get off the net quick, and get up. Sometimes as a middle, you don't have time to get your full approach, but you've got to be up and ready. And so you working hard and being up, regardless of how quick that dig is, is just a lot of work. And the ace off of Robinson. For Gabby Leo, a five foot five sophomore setter from Phoenix. The fourth of the match for Pacific, BYU with two. Off the tape, Knighting. This one hit to the bench from Kaminsky. 4-3 BYU in set four. 
Cougars lost the first set by three, dominated the last two sets, and here we are in set four. Dalton Nixon, uh, Taylor's husband, had nine points and eight rebounds in a start last night in the exhibition men's basketball game. Nighting swings. Bradford, right at Nixon. Robinson, off of Leo and out, 5-3. Maddie Robinson, 11 kills. Hitting nearly 500. Well, I mean, look at the hitting percentage of both your outside hitters. You usually want outside hitters above 200. That's pretty solid, 250. 600 for McKenna Miller, 526 from Maddie Robinson. Robinson hits that one out. Just her second hitting error. Just three combined from Miller and Robinson in terms of hitting error is incredible. I think that's a credit to the outside hitters making great decisions. It also is a credit to Whitney Bauer, which means she is setting the ball in such great location that those outside hitters have great swings regardless of where they are. 5-4 and set four. Robinson. Set her out. Tubbs after Deniman. Mary Lake with another dig. Knighting tips it over. Patterson goes inside. Dayton underneath it. Bauer, Robinson touched. Sadegi with the dig. And this one way out, but kept alive by Deniman. Robinson. The rally continues. Tied on the net. And Knighting wins it. Pacific pushes over. Bauer, Robinson again. Here we go. And finally blocked by Knighting. Everyone take a breather. You deserve it. <laughs> Longest rally ever. Such hard work defensively for these players. And then a great block as Knighting had worked so hard getting in there. I grew a beard during that rally. I'm going to have to shave or the honor code police will come find me. Deniman, cross court, out. Talked about Deniman, listed at 5'10", probably 5'8". Has the ups, just crafty in the air, a little too far on that one. 7'4". Mary Lake's pursuit of number one in digs all time update. It's got 13 digs. So 19 to go to be number one outright. All time at BYU. Knighting is blocked, still alive. Miller. Nice dig by Sadegi. Tubbs high for Deniman and way out. The missed on the last couple. Now hitting in the negative with Deniman. 8-4. Timeout Pacific. Cougars up 8-4 on a 5-1 run in set four trying to get to him. 9-4. 17 kills for the senior. 6-1 run, Brigham. Miller. Third team All-American as a freshman, honorable mention the last two years. I imagine she'll be higher than that this year. And double contact for Gabby Leo trying to make an aggressive play back to the right side. Trying to go against motion and get that ball to the right side. Pacific came in with a lot of grit and effort but at some point it's hard to just consistently be good over that long period of time and I think BYU just has gradually worn them down uh, throughout the course of this match. After hitting 500 in the first set hitting the negative last set negative 118 right now one kill on 17 swings in the set I mean it's been tough to get a point on offense. Patterson Pounds it, but out. You love watching Patterson, though. She doesn't need a huge approach, but she can generate so much power from that swing. It's unbelievable. 11-5. Patterson with a team-high 12 kills. Go with nine digs, approaching a double-double. Sherman. Sherman's had a great afternoon. Well, it's that three over and over. BYU is not helping on the right side, and so that leaves the middle all alone. Traditionally, once you set the three, it becomes that off blocker's call, and, and BYU just not following that. Eschenberg is dug up. Deniman is struggling. Owen goes out again. Eight errors to go with six kills. 
and BYU doubling up Pacific 12-6. If BYU ends up winning this, the damage was done in terms of a streak ended. Pacific hadn't taken a set from BYU in the last 27 coming into the match, and one set won. Kind of set the tone for this. BYU appears to have woken up in sets two and three. And that growth mindset comes into play as Miller blocks Sherman on the attempted slide. I think Pacific did in that first set. It wasn't that BYU just didn't come out to play. I think Pacific played great volleyball. They were very smart, didn't make any hitting errors. They were so tough across the service lane as well. Free ball from the Tigers. And Nixon on the right side crushing it. Nixon's been an interesting story too. Tore ACL a couple years ago. Missed the last half of that season. Has become a starter and big contributor on this team as well. Yes. Great placement. It's one thing to be able to swing while it's another to be able to read the block and know where to go. Yeah, on that particular play, she had a double block in front of her, something she hasn't seen before, and just tipping right over. When they can get a pass up to the net, if they can continue to use that middle, they can find some success. And Deniman gets the ace. Allison Deniman, success from the line for Pacific. Five aces in this match. And Tubbs leading the way with two. She's the libero. Fantastic. Mary Lake, what a set to Nixon. Are you kidding me? Where, where'd she learn that? Uh, Volleyball Nations League in China? It's amazing. <laughs> She's had some time. Beautiful bump set all the way out to the antenna. That's called bettering the ball. You take yourself out of system, and then you put it right back in system with a terrific play. There's a Bradford off the block. Specifics hanging on, trying to make a run here and challenge and set four. BYU up six with 10 to go. There's Tubbs who has two aces this afternoon. Lake coming over to pass that ball outside the three meter line. Untouched from Nixon. Leads down to five for BYU. Pacific serving game is really ramped up in the latter part of this set. They are putting a lot of pressure on the passing lanes for BYU, and Cougars want to talk about it. First challenge from Heather Olmstead. Challenge of touch on the swing. See if BYU gets the point here. A pseudo timeout opportunity as well. Right, I think definitely the passing lanes as we get a good look at this if there was a touch or not. Either way, it's an opportunity for BYU to kind of settle in. That does not look like any fingers. And because Heather Olmstead hasn't used any of these challenges, has the three sitting there, can use this as a timeout if she wants, even if it oh. doesn't look like it touches. It's a great angle, though. We put our slow-mos on the high end on both sides so that we'd have an opportunity to identify these situations. And it doesn't look like there's touch. So currently 15-10 Pacific, unless it's reversed, I don't think it will be. And then there's that guy. <laughs> Heather Olmstead, what a resume for her. The record and incredible, 89% win percentage, highest of any coach in history at any division, minimum one season. Point stays with Pacific, by the way. Has won the league all four years, going for a fifth. Now we say three Sweet 16s, they've been to four, but they ended in the Sweet 16 three times, went to the Final Four last year, and uh, 2018 ABCA Coach of the Year. I mean, Last year was an unbelievable season, getting to the Final Four for BYU. What's in store for the Cougars this year? We will find out. Touch, leg tries to keep it alive. Morgan Bauer, three ball from Robinson. Leo, Bradford through the block. Just a touch late. 
And a little bit of a run here from the Tigers to keep it interesting. 15-11 in set four. BYU had been so good with that first ball side out, and as the serving pressure has increased from Pacific, now they're on the defensive a little more throughout the entire rally. The trickle over just like she dialed it up. And the ace, timeout BYU. That lead down to three, pressure on now. As Tubbs gets her third ace of the match. Well, that's as fortunate as you're going to find. That touched a lot of tape. <laughs> Six aces for Pacific this afternoon. Yeah, that's a lot. BYU continuing to try and build its resume for the best seat possible in the NCAA tournament. BYU's been to numerous Sweet 16s in a row. Final four last year was awesome. BYU ranked 11th in the country. That is an opinion poll that will factor into this per se, but when you look at BYU's resume, 19 and 3, 10 and 1 in the league, RPI 19. So BYU not necessarily deserving of hosting all the way to the Elite Eight. Sweet 16 for the first two, certainly. Record against top 50 RPI is interesting. Three and three. BYU's played six matches, beat Stanford, huge win at, in Maples. At Utah is a really good win. VCU in there as well. The losses, Marquette, Texas. Look at that RPI too. San Diego. So some respectable losses. No bad losses at all. BYU probably looks like a team that should host in the first and second rounds, and then we'll have to go on the road. Right. And then where will they go is the big critical Probably Texas, because right. that's where BYU has ended up going, it I feels know. like. And Would... Texas looks so good right now. Yes, they're and getting... defeated BYU. Yeah, they're getting healthy, and they are definitely a team to watch. BYU and Pitt are the only undefeated teams in true road matches this year, by the way, in the country. And BYU's won 39 of the last 40 going back to October 15, 2016. So BYU's actually been really awesome on the road should it come to that should BYU host and win and Tubbs goes long and that is why you call a timeout to try and ice the server 16-12 BYU up two sets to one Mary Lake with 14 digs today so 18 more to be number one over the swing and bumped over Knighting catches a piece Bradford through the block again. Bradford on a roll. Terror hitting there on the outside, just utilizing that block. That strength, that big arm, and she's just attacking the seam. And everyone in the gym on that play knows where the ball's going and still gets it. Deniman with the dig off to the Nixon offering. Bradford this time off the block. Yes, touched by BYU and out. No contest from BYU. Well, and what the block and the defense for Pacific is doing is they're turning every hard-driven ball into a free ball that they can transition for a kill. BYU is yet to get a clean first ball kill. That service pressure. Deniman pops it up. Chance to cut it to one right here. It'll be a free ball instead. Robinson. Sends that lead to three, 17-14. Pacific had a chance to convert it, did nice not do it. by Robinson. You can see she had to speed up, kind of push fast forward on her approach in order to get to that ball and get there quick. Luckily, she can do that. She's very explosive as a hitter. Nixon with the ace into the ref stand. And a timely one at that. Pacific had seized momentum for the moment, cutting it to two. One even, and now it's 18-14 on the ace from Nixon, her eighth of the season. As Gibbons comes to chat about that. Out of system. Patterson blocked by Knighting. Tubbs high. Everyone knows it's going to Patterson. It goes long. And no touch. She says, my bad, 1914. And things getting away from the Tigers right now. Down five with six to go. Better pass to Leo. Different option, different result. Skaminski gets the kill. 
The side out percentage today by the Tigers, by the way, 49%. BYU 71. Yeah. Oh, I think we've seen Pacific play their best volleyball for sure in that first set. And then this latter part of the fourth set, they've really started to get things going again. They're using the block, they're finding some seams, and that starts with the tough serve. Sadegi serving for the Tigers into the net. 2015, Pacific's going to have a harder time coming back from this deficit at this point now. And BYU five to go as they play Fleur Song to a late 90s classic. <laughs> I love this song. I guess I still do love it. Patterson into David Height and out. So what was working is not working now for Pacific from the line and hitting. Right, and missed opportunity there. You can see that big seam in the block. And earlier, Patterson would have hammered that straight down, maybe into someone's face. 34th set. Kaminsky keeps it alive. Knighting is dig by Leo. Tubbs calls for it. Here's Patterson. Roof by Knighting. 22-15. Patterson wanted to go seam, but it was not there. Knighting had closed that block all the way. 6-1 BYU run, 14th block by BYU. A crazy number at the net today. What a dig. This one's tied for Miller, keeps it alive. Three to go for BYU, touched by Knighting. Blocked but out. But message sent. It's hard to get it past Heather Knighting right now. She was almost blocking over Whitney Bauer as she reached <laughs> that ball. Watch her hands. She's going to reach over and close that block. <laughs> she takes away seam and then some. Ace off of Robinson. Sadegi. Making another player with an ace and seven combined. Excuse me. Kaminsky. 22 17. Knighting just a bit outside. Right. 22 18. Tigers keeping it interesting here. The end of set four. BYU three points away from a win. Greg Gibbons looks on. Gibbons told us before the match. Lots of experience with uh, long time and legendary head coach. Carl McGowan of the men's team, gold medal squared camps and whatnot. Been in this gym a, a bunch of times. Deniman blocked it out. How about that? 22-19. The palms get a little sweatier. Your BYU, 22-19 timeout BYU. And the margin is down to three. Well, Sir Dwight, Princess Greta, and the rest of the gang are back for more Medieval Madness. Don't miss an episode of Dwight in Shining Armor. Sunday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, only on BYU TV and the BYU TV app. Pacific won the first set by three. Lost the next two sets by 14 and 13. And now have come back down 22-19 to make this interesting down three. With three to go. Tiger fans are dancing right now. BYU using another timeout to talk about this. Pacific has two, make it one challenge left. BYU has two, should it come to that. We're in the final moments of set four. Can Pacific push this thing to five? Well, anytime you go to five, it's all up in the air. Anything can happen. It's such a quick set that BYU for sure wants to finish this in four. You can feel the momentum and the confidence on the Pacific side as they've found some success offensively using the block again, and that's exactly what they did in the first set. Four points in a row after BYU was up 22-15. And here we sit. And the crowd getting into it a bit here. And of course, it's because they're throwing out free t-shirts. <laughs> Here we go, Kaminsky, Pacific down three, out of the timeout. 
Slide to Nighting, and that one's a good for a kill. Momentum quelled. 23-19. Great job from Robinson to step in there. They've been picking on her a little bit, and she comes what, up with the perfect pass, allowing BYU to run the slide to Nighting. Good play out of the timeout. Patterson, Leo, this is really low for Sherman, but gets it to go or not. Yes, finally the whistle comes. And that one went down. Sherman made something out of nothing. 23-20. Sherman with seven, make it eight kills tonight. And here's Patterson, the ace leader. Goes quick on this. Pulls Bauer off the line. Miller off hands. Sadegi, Leo just has to pop it up. Deneman keeps it in. Eschenberg! Match point for BYU. 24-20. Terrific transition from Eschenberg. In the air, up and ready for her fifth kill. And BYU's best server at the line. Bauer throws the knuckleball. Sherman dug up by Lake. Her 16th. Miller ends it! And BYU comes back to defeat Pacific in four.